Oh, I love it, mate. How strange that we have effectively both had opposite ideas, more or less opposite. You want sanity, I want insanity. The ultimate clash of the titans. to episode five of the Inane Campaign podcast. I'm Mark Rowe and once again I'm joined by Andy Gleeks. Together we will be casting a net into the wide pool of change.org and trying to pull out a big catch in the way of the funny and bizarre campaigns that are doing the rounds on change. And then we'll be looking to catch our own whoppers with our own petitions trying to gain the most support for the campaigns that we're running. Hello Andy, how are you? I am very well, Mark. Thank you for asking. That's very kind of you. Well, you know me. I've always got your, uh, got your happiness at heart, truly. <laughs> that, that again is for the audio listeners. I am putting my fingers into the shape of a heart to show Mark how much I love him. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. I need some love this week after our campaigns. Um, what, what have you been up to with your campaign this week? So my campaign last week, if you didn't listen to the show, was I got on change.org and I wanted people and implored people to let the EU invade Britain because Brexit has gone on long enough and as a died in the wool remainer, I think it's now time to beckon our European overlords in to, to crush us under their very cosmopolitan European heel. At last count, I had 25 supporters. I had 176 views of my petition, but they did not translate into a lot of supporters. So people are clearly clicking on my page, having a yawn, and then moving on. (laughs) Well, I guess you're going to have to up your game in terms of the way that you plead with them to try and get them to support you. Yeah, there was only eight shares as well, which I'm very disappointed about. That So that basically means with 176 views and eight shares, there's a 4% view to share ratio. That is appalling. Although, to be fair, I got a 14% view to sign ratio. And uh, I'm even boring myself now talking about the numbers, to be quite honest, Mark. <laughs> I was going to say, I love how you're getting so into the stats of this. It's like the old fantasy football with Stato on the side, giving all the details that nobody actually really cares about. No, I should have just written a better blurb, to be honest, and then I wouldn't have had the obsess over the numbers. But I was pretty pleased with 25 supporters because 25 supporters is the most I've ever had. Actually, I had a little look just before we started recording. You're up to 26. Yeah! That's the magic number, as we all know. There you go. Um, And as disappointed as you may be with all of your ratios, and I'd love to be able to come back and tell you that I'd worked out all of my statistics, but I have a life. So uh, I didn't do that. (laughs) But you still... I worked out some of your statistics. You worked them out for me. Yeah, I mean, I haven't had a look today, but at one point uh, I was a, b- a bit worried. So I went on yours, and remember you had you were advocating what was it again? You were advocating? I can't remember. So my campaign last week was to try and make supermarket sweep the new way to shop. And That's give, right. Give everybody three minutes in the supermarket to go and pile their shopping into a trolley, and whatever you get is what you get. Beautiful. And a very admirable campaign. And at one point I went on and you had seven supporters. Now, I think you've ended up with more than that. But you had seven supporters at that point. You had 73 views, but you had 17 shares. Now, what's all that about, Mark? How do you have such a high share ratio? What's the magic? I think the sad truth is, my friend, that they count every time you as a person <laughs> share that link somewhere. So that was just me putting it everywhere, putting it on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit. Again, I went back on there and I tried my very hardest to get some interest and get some support in it. I was tweeting Rylan Clark. We talked about him as the new presenter of 
uh, supermarket sweep, nothing. So I thought, okay, well, I'll go to the people who really make a, make a decision on it. So I was tweeting Tesco's, Asda, Morrison's, trying to play them off against each other as well. Uh, nothing, no response whatsoever. I think that's just abysmal that they wouldn't be interested in something that would make their supermarket an absolute chaotic mess to run, Mark. I don't understand why they wouldn't want to back it. I, I've got no idea why they weren't on board. It, I'm starting to think that people have rumbled us and that they know that we're just having a laugh and that we're not taking this too seriously. I was really disappointed with my view to share ratio being so low, but I've shared mine less and I've got more supporters. So actually, what I've hit on is a very efficient way of doing this competition. Absolutely. I'm, I'm intrigued as well, because you sent me a message at one point <laughs> during this week, and you said, I have resorted to something tragic in order to try and win support for this campaign. But you wouldn't tell me what it was. No. What was the big difference? What, what did you end up on? How many supporters did you have at last look? 11. 11. Okay, so you got 11 supporters. I got 25 supporters. What was the difference, Mark? What, what is the magic of Gleeksy? What is he doing that oh. manages to make sure that he galvanizes people to support him? Or alternatively, Mark... Where did I get the twenty pound to push my petition on change.org? <laughs> you bought those votes. You bought those signatures. Cash for votes. Cash for votes. If you pay twenty quid on change.org, they do the legwork for you. They get busy. And they show it to like-minded people based on their algorithms. Well, you know, I've saved some money during lockdown. There's no commute. There's no petrol. I thought, let's put it into a worthy cause. What charity could I effectively support? What? Oh, me. The charity of me and my, the podcast competition. That is what I did, Mark. And I am not ashamed to admit it. Your, you, your victory cut me deep. And I thought, if it's 20 quid a win, 20 quid. That is disgusting. I am, I am absolutely mortified by that. But you wish you had the idea. Oh, I'm devastated. I'm absolutely devastated. So hang on. So if you pay change, then they promote your campaign and then you end up with more votes. Well, yeah. They just basically think of them as like an advertiser. They just basically get my petition in more pub toilets, on more lampposts, on more billboards. And, you know, that drives sales, doesn't it? I mean, I thought, could I slog myself around Facebook, Twitter, the social media, or could I put an internet diving suit on and plunge into Reddit like you do? Or could I pay £20, sit on my backside, watch Hamilton on Disney Plus, and just let my money make the internet come to me i don't think that this is the kind of thing that we should be promoting and accepting i don't think you can just win by putting the most cash into it well yeah I admittedly if i carry on down this road it's going to become a very <laughs> expensive game for me like 20 pound every week i worry if this podcast runs and runs and i keep this up by the end of the series, I'll be running a bigger national debt than America during the Great Depression. Yeah, absolutely. and I'll be, I'll be so destitute, I'll be singing Woody Guthrie's Dust Bowl Refugee outside of reopened Weatherspoons. I'm a Dust Bowl Refugee. I don't know if you know the music of the Great Depression, Mark. No, I'm not, I'm not au fait with that, to be honest. Check out Woody Guthrie's Dust Bowl Refugee. It's one of the classics, my friend. One of the classics. So I think we're going to have to establish some rules here because I, I am not happy with it. I am not happy that you have basically undermined the whole system by just chucking some money at the campaign. Well, what if I, what if I get addicted to doing it? Like financial fair play is an issue in football. We're going to see Man City kicked out of the Champions League next year for hoarding £50 million right backs. The question is, are you going to kick me out of the Inane Campaigns podcast? 
Well, I, I am tempted. I am tempted. And I think I would probably have to go down that route, except I need to tell you this. So on Monday night, when I was thinking about what was going on and how we were going to promote this campaign, I had a little check on the inane campaign emails. There was a receipt, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. So I was well aware that you had paid £20 to try and promote your campaign. And obviously, <laughs> the first thing that I did was see if it had stored your credit card details. <laughs> <laughs> so that I was able to put that into my campaign. Um, alas, it doesn't do that. Oh. But on Monday night, I matched your £20. Ah, okay. So when I said, oh, all this tweeting is paying off and I'm starting to catch you up, it had absolutely nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> we are both as underhand as each other. I love it. I didn't think it through, though, because I was obviously behind where you were at. So I haven't managed to catch you up. Although I've made a late surge, it's done me no good whatsoever. And I've literally just taken a £20 note and thrown it down the drain. <laughs> you need to cheat early. That's <laughs> what you need to do. So are we going to have a, a gentleman's agreement, then, that we're not going to throw money at this each week and start... <laughs> Because it's going to get out of hand. I think we have to be. We're, we'll say, no money. Let's not let... Money's ruined everything else, Mark. Let's yeah. not let money destroy what we have together, what we've built. But a 25 is loads of people. 26. 26. And what's more, you insisted last week, virtually insisted that we would use a Twitter poll as well to try and gain more votes. Have you checked that? Do you know how that's affected the standings? Because maybe, uh -huh. out there confidently, maybe you didn't do as well as you thought you did. Oh, no. Oh, no. What is it? I haven't checked the Twitter poll. I've been too busy. So, Andy, I have to ah! you, my friend. We got one vote each. <laughs> oh. Oh. You shouldn't do that to people, Mark. That's not, that's not good fun. <laughs>
Uh, no, they say Nero fiddled while Rome burned. He wasn't. He was in a bath eating a plate of biscuits. <laughs> and that's the truth. If you were bathing in biscuits, what would be your biscuit of choice? Oh, well, no. I think, um, and I know there's a big debate about this because obviously, you know, the clue's in the name, Jaffa Cakes. Jaffa Cakes would be quite spongy and they'd be quite comfortable, but as we know, they aren't biscuits. Spaghetti? Spaghetti? That's not biscuit. Yeah, I just think spaghetti would be quite comfortable, wouldn't it? Because it's yeah. nice, like, if, obviously, if you boil it, you know, throw it on the wall, make sure it's nice and soft. You know the old throw it on the wall thing? Yeah, yeah. Get it in the bath. They're all nice and sort of, you know, again, quite spongy, quite loose. You can dive into it, can move around, wiggle around in it, wiggle around in a bath of spaghetti. <laughs> which, which again, as much as I was enjoying your mime, <laughs> not a biscuit. You can't bath in spaghetti if you're supposed to be taking a biscuit bath. It's, it's true, it's true. But as we know, I'm not a stickler for the rules with my <laughs> 20, 20 quid heist. <laughs> rules don't apply to me, Mark. <laughs> they told me I could bath in biscuits. I said, no, spaghetti <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go bourbons. Oh yeah, okay. But wouldn't a lot of them would snap, and then the sort of creamy bit might get some places that you don't really want it to be. Well, I think I'm just thinking the creamy bit will act a bit like a pillow. Like you know, you could really relax and just. Oh have yeah, okay. <laughs> so would you like before you got in, you'd have to take the top off quite a few of them. No, you could do it while you're in there. I think give you something to do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> long and boring, aren't they? So you know, give you something to. While away the hours in the bath. What did you do while you were in the biscuit bath? Oh, I just took the top off a load of bourbons. It was much more comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> because I got so sort of taken with Kim Jong-un last week, I did find one more um, about Kim Jong-un. For the past year and a half, my family has had Kim Jong-un's picture on our wall in place of where our youngest brother Rico should be. My mum has declared that if we change Rico's picture back to Kim Jong-un, we will be grounded from our phones. Please help us not lose our phones, but keep the comic relief in our dining room. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's got a picture of the whole family. It's got the three kids. And then in the last picture on the right-hand side, it's quite clearly got Kim Jong-un. And I just love that. I love that idea that, you know, they were just run about the house one day and they went, I know, let's swap Rico for the North Korean dictator. I like the fact that the parents know the only way to punish children in, in 2020 is to take away their phone. That's absolutely the only way that you can get a child's attention is I will take your phone off you. Stop putting pictures of Kim Jong-un on the wall or you won't be able to go on WhatsApp anymore. Oh, kids don't use WhatsApp. They're flat out on the Snapchat, aren't they? WhatsApp's for adults, you know. Get, get, get with the times, Mark. What have you found? There's a debate raging, isn't there, about who should be the next James Bond. I think they've mm. said already that Daniel Craig's not going to do it after, after one more or after the, I don't know, after one that they're working on. As you know from, from the past, my knowledge of films is not fantastic. <laughs> So, I'm surprised you know who James Bond is. Yeah, well, there you go. There's been all, all sorts of talk, hasn't there, about who it should be, who should be the next Bond, whether they have a black James Bond, or uh, I think Idris Elba was, was mooted as the next Bond, wasn't he? Um, but I think this is the person to go with. You'll like this. Make Rick Astley the new James Bond. Sold. That is an amazing idea. And, and let's face it, he, in terms of, you know, spying for Britain, going undercover, defeating bad guys, um, he's never, ever, ever going to give it up, is he? <laughs> and he wouldn't let you down? No. Uh, what's he's the next bit? He wouldn't hurt you if he was James Bond. Never going to run around. He might hurt you if you're on the wrong side, if yeah, you yeah. are not British or not fighting for British interests in the geopolitical spy game. 
Yeah, well, I think we've already put together a more convincing argument than the person who put it on change, because they just wrote, Rick Astley should be the new James Bond. That is all. I mean, some campaigns just sell themselves, though, don't they? This is another good one that I found. I put this in, right? I'll be honest, the title didn't hook me that much, but it's the description that got me, right? Okay. So the title was, Bring Back Squirty Custard in a Can. Squirty custard in a can? I did not know that was a thing. Well, I didn't know it was a thing, but I'm, I'm assuming like the, like the squirty cream that you get, that you can put on a hot chocolate and all of that, but they did it with custard. Hmm. What do you think about that? Would you be a fan of squirty custard? I do like a bit of custard. So, yeah, but I, I prefer hot custard, and I'm assuming squirty custard out of a can ain't going to cut it. I mean, you could... This is a dangerous move and not one that I am suggesting that any of our listeners follow, but you could get a lighter and you could heat up the sealed can, the pressurized can, because that always goes well, doesn't it, when you heat up cans uh, like that, pressurized cans. Anytime I've been at a bonfire and somebody's thrown a pressurized can in, there has been no health and safety uh, problems whatsoever uh, no scoldings of people as can flying can came out hit their head and they received third degree burns i do like the way that you dropped that in casually like it's a regular occurrence for you but i guess that is the life of somebody who's grown up in northern ireland don't know i know actually i'm from the side that doesn't hang around bonfires my friend <laughs> <laughs> right. that's where things get sticky <laughs> Well, it does get sticky if you throw cans of custard on it. Do you remember that programme called Brainiac that used to be on the TV with a guy called John Tickle, who I think was originally one of the contestants on Big Brother, and then he, he started presenting this programme called Brainiac where they did ridiculous science experiments. I, I know exactly what you're going to say because I think I was going to reference this myself. Is this about a swimming pool full of custard? Yeah, absolutely. And you can walk on custard. I think that's amazing. I want to have a go at that. That I would have a go at. You know, when you were younger, again, you don't tend to see this so much anymore. You used to be able to sign up on like stag do's and stuff like that to be able to walk on hot coals or you do it for charity. Do you remember all this sort of thing? I think. I didn't know people were doing it on stag do's. That doesn't seem like good fun at all. <laughs> It, what, it, I think it was a stag do kind of thing. You know, on stag do's, you go and basically do the most dangerous things that you can possibly do. And it's ridiculous to give drunk people the opportunity to do it. Like, you know, quad biking and paintballing on mountain sides. And I once went uh, mountain boarding, but with the worst hangover in the world because we were on a stag do. So obviously I did. I made it about halfway down the hill, gave up, and then went and sat at the bottom and drank very, very sugary tea. <laughs> I was going to tell you this description of bring back squirty custard in a can. You'll like Mm. this. You'll like this, Andy. It's like a bedtime story. All right. So I like a bedtime story. I'll go get a blanket. Yeah. Settle yourself in for this. You ready? Yeah. When I was a child, magic was real. A host of imaginary butterflies and songbirds accompanied me everywhere like tiny flappy angels. I did not know what sadness was, and every day was summer in my world. This was the same for every child in Britain. The reason? Squirty custard in a can. This foamy yellow elixir was our passion, our joy, our life. Then a corporate monster took it all away and left a child heartbroken. Anchor, how could you? Are you making some kind of hideous doomsday device powered by the tears of bereft kids? Perhaps you never stop making it and are stockpiling it for yourselves. Is it that you never tire of seeing crowds of now middle-aged 1980s children outside your offices silently mouthing the word? I beseech you, rectify this injustice and make us whole again for the sake of everybody's children. Bring back the squirty custard. That's so heartfelt and so, yeah, I mean, it took a very dark turn at one point when you start getting, no, anchor, no. I love the word elixir. It's that that poetry we've talked about before, you know. Yeah, Byron, Shelley, 
Keats and then this guy with the squirty custard. Poetry, you would think that that would have persuaded them. Didn't. Would you put squirty custard in a bath? Oh, yeah. Bath full of squirty float, custard. You'd float on top of it, though, wouldn't you? You wouldn't submerge yourself in it. You'd need quite a few cans, I imagine. Or just one very well heated can of squirty custard. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's nice. Bring back squirty custard. Go for it. I think we should. I think we should do it. Anchor, if you're listening, bring back squirty custard. We support this. So that is what other people have been doing on change. We need to think about our own campaigns this week and I need to, without spending a fortune, try and get back on top. What is it, 3-1 to you now? 3-1, 3-1, you're going down, you're going down. Yeah, this is not good. Um, But before we talk about the campaigns that we are going to run this week, what have you ruled out? What have I ruled out? Um, Okay, Uh, here's the ones that I ruled out. Um, The Middle East conflict to be settled by one football match between Israel and Palestine. Oh, that's that's not. That's got an air of World War One all about it. Uh, But they can draft in three ringers each. So (laughs) uh, Palestine or Israel, they can try and persuade good footballers, like you know, so. They might get their hands on Ronaldo, Messi, Harry Kane, say, you know, um, and just spice it up a bit. Because as we all know, um, Israelis and Palestinians cannot play football for toffee. So who's going to watch that that contest? Speaking of the Middle East, um, a woman in my local area uh, has been put on a terrorism watch list. Um, I'm not. I'm not saying that the British Secret Service have got things wrong or are ultra paranoid, but all she has done is send supplies to the refugee camps in Calais, and she got put on a terrorism watch list for that. You know, she's lovely, warm, and compassionate, and they think she's an Al Qaeda. I don't quite know what to say to that. I think that's what, what is. What is someone as nice as her going to do as a terrorist? go out on the streets of London and use a duvet launcher for the homeless. Hey, homeless people, how about a comfy nap? <laughs> oh, I'm feeling really sleepy. What's you going to do? Uh, launch a food grenade? Set a baked potato incendiary device to go off at lunchtime? Oh, this exploded and all I could uh, taste was this deliciously hot, fluffy King Edward oozing melted butter. Um, Oh, you don't think she'd get on the tube and detonate an aid parcel, do you? Like, <laughs> what? I just don't understand. Well, like, how can you get it so wrong? The other thing that I wanted, uh, th- that I thought I might do, was I might campaign to bring back happy days. Yes, now you're talking. But I want the actors to be the same age as they are now. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Here's a thing for you. You will love this. I once went out for a jog. Um, that's not the whole story. That's, that's not the... Really, Mark? Wow, that's great. Tell me more. At one point, uh, I, I got quite into running, and I used to go and run around an entire lake in Milton Keynes, and I ran past Fonzie. Wow. What was Fonzie doing in Milton Keynes? Henry Winkler? Henry Winkler was taking a walk around Tongwell Lake and I went jogging past him, gave him a little wave as I went and then carried on on my merry way, trying to look like I wasn't dying inside from, from my run. What was he? Why was he there? He was in Panto. Ah, how the mighty have fallen. Yeah, he was playing Captain Hook in Peter Pan at Milton Keynes Theatre. You start off on primetime US syndicated television end up in Milton Keynes that's the, that is the trajectory of all stars <laughs> well, hang on. some of us start off in Milton Keynes you, you, you dare to dream Mark that's the difference you started at the bottom started at the bottom now I'm here 
there's only one way to go if you start off in Milton Keynes. That's that's all we'll say. You're going to end up on prime time American <laughs> television. That's what's going to happen to you. You're the you're the yin to Fonzie's yang. <laughs> I want to be cast in your remake of Happy Days. That's what I want to do. Yeah, I like that. So basically, in my remake, you'd get an AIDS Henry Winkler. Rather than shuffling around a lake in Milton Keynes, he'd shuffle around Al's diner in a Zimmer frame, trying to still act cool in his leather jacket. You'd have, you'd have Ron Howard trying to comb his non-existent hair. Um, I mean, they're, they're going to struggle to uh, get Richie Cunningham's mum and dad back for the remake, but uh, I, mean, I don't know, maybe they could just recast somebody in the role of Richie Cunningham's mum. Who would be a down at a sort of kind of homely, uh, you know, housewife looks care of their, takes care of their children. I know, just get Mrs. Brown, just recast <laughs> Mrs. Brown from British television. Get one of our shining stars and put them in the remake of Happy Days. Um, that would be hilarious. You'd only have convicts watching it if you did that. Sounds good to me. So they were my they were my two ideas. Um, but I sort of scrapped them because um, I just thought, you know what, I'm, I would really have to pay 20 quid to get some traction behind those two. Yeah, um, I think that's going to cost you more than 20 quid, I think. Hmm. Uh, I had some other ones, uh, like coffee to be renamed Anxiety Petroleum, um, stuff like that. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, it just didn't, I don't drink a lot of coffee, hence why it gives me anxiety and I feel like it, it should be called Anxiety Petroleum. There's, there's a lot of coffee drinkers who would not want you to do that. I once drank a very strong cup of coffee from Starbucks in Belfast and because I'm not a habitual drinker of it, I walked around Belfast so frightened and shook up that I thought I was going to be stabbed <laughs> in my brain. I just created an alternate reality where the coffee shook me up so much. I was like, there's people after me. You sure that was the coffee? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It was the coffee. Oh, brilliant. I sort of wish coffee could have that much effect. For me, it just gets me to work on time. Should I tell you what I've ruled out then? Yeah, go for it. Right, last week you said, I can't remember quite how you put it, but you basically said that you thought that the campaigns worked better when you were more specific rather than being general. Is that right? What I noticed was my first week, it was very niche and it was all about an email that my local estate agent sent um, to me that wound me up and then the bigger I got talking about Boris Johnson and these big cultural touchstone, touchstone sorry, um, the the less traction I got to the point where I got three votes for um, one of my campaigns a couple of weeks ago, can't remember what it was I just thought, yeah maybe, maybe the more niche the better Okay, well I've gone the other way um, I'm thinking stop bad stuff happening to good people well, that's a very noble thing. Yeah, I think that's a good campaign. But I'm, you know, I'm obviously this is an inane campaigns. So I don't want to get into the the actual nitty gritty of some really bad things that happen. I'm talking about, you know, stubbing your toe, burning your toast. I don't want to see those bad things happening to good people anymore. I think we should stop that. <laughs> I don't really think that Chains.org's got the power to just stop random events, random bad events. Why not? Uh, d don't know. Think that that's live. <laughs> well, if enough people want it, then and they sign the petition, then we can we can stop those things happening, can't we? Y yeah. Okay. If you truly believe in the magic of change.org in that way, that's fine, Mark. Uh, I might need to have a phone call with some people talk about your mental capacities. <laughs> Well, this is what they say, you know, they say, if you want something bad enough, you can have it. And I want to stop bad things happening to good people. Yeah. Stubbing toes. What else? Losing their bus pass. Yeah. Oh, that's a bad one. I wouldn't want that to happen to anybody who's a good person. Yeah. On the other hand, if they were a bad person, I'd be delighted if they lost their bus pass. Oh, yeah. Would you applaud? <laughs> I'd, I'd do a little dance. 
<laughs> Good. That's nice. There's Mark rubbing salt in the wounds of angry pensioners everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Well, if they're a bad person, they deserve it, don't they? Yeah. That's, that's it. It's very, very black and white. Yeah. Yeah. Schadenfreude, isn't it? Exactly. Cheer them on. Cheer them on at the bus stop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or clap. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore, quite frankly. Would, that, would, would they discover that they'd lost their bus pass once they got on the bus? Or for, I think on the bus. I think ultimate humiliation, having to turn yeah. and get back off the bus. That's always the worst, isn't it? You've got a whole bus kind of wondering what you've done, what the shame is. Because let's face it, the bar for getting on a bus is very low. Yeah. But so, so to be to be not admitted to the bus is the lowest of the low indeed. Yeah. Well, they deserve it, quite frankly, and I'm glad. Get off the bus. Um, all right, so what have you decided is going to be your campaign for this week, Mr. Gleeks? Okay. I want Joe Exotic to be released from prison and allowed to run as Kanye West's vice president. Oh, well, this is going to get very interesting. Oh, okay. Um, we all watched Tiger King, vintage early lockdown from five years ago. Yeah, you know, five years ago it was. It felt like five years ago. We all thrilled to the adventures of crazy man Joe Exotic. That man sure did love protecting his tigers. Never was there a more egoless, selfless zoo owner dedicated to the preservation of one species. And the authorities did what they always do with all prophets of truth. They laughed at him, derided him, they locked him up. The world needs Joe Exotic's sense of warmth and compassion. They threw him in jail, a bigger miscarriage of justice than Deirdre Rashid. The man himself said he was the victim of discrimination as an openly gay man with the largest collection of generic tigers and crossbreeds. Everyone knows Carol Baskin killed her husband. She's the real villain of Tiger King. Anyway, let's make amends. Free Joe Exotic, but free him on license. And parole has one condition. Joe Exotic must be Kanye West's running mate and vice president. If they win, then Joe can be officially pardoned by the president. Think about it. America went through the looking glass in 2016 when they elected a bankrupt narcissist who would struggle understanding the hungry caterpillar. Why not let them jump properly down the rabbit hole by doubling down on the fun, bringing together the craziest, most egotistic twosome since Kim Kardashian and Kanye. <laughs> Esso in the 1980s used to say, put a tiger in your tank. Well, put one in the Oval Office. Joe Exotic and Kanye West 2020, because the world isn't crazy enough. <laughs> Fair play. Here's the thing. We talked previously about drawing battle lines. And, and obviously, as people have seen, we are fiercely competitive about winning these uh, little competitions each week. But this is about to get tasty because I don't think Kanye West should be running for president. So my campaign is something a little bit different. It says this, the world today is a bizarre place. I mean, who'd have thought a year ago you'd have to stay a couple of meters away when you pop out to buy some potatoes, that only recently reinstated football on the telly would be accompanied by canned cheering and that you'd be wearing a mask all year round, not just on Halloween. So it's not really that surreal that a man who seemingly struggles to spell his own name to the point that he's reduced it to just the last two letters, not all that surprising considering he prides himself on being a college dropout, is genuinely talking about running for president. The madness needs to stop. The trouble is, as Andy said, America has a track record of famous people from the world of entertainment venturing into politics, with Ronald Reagan, a previous president, and Arnie following in his footsteps as governor of California. Who's to say that Kanye won't be able to grab the power that he wants? In order to ensure that his presidential bid all falls down, we need to make sure that he has a formidable opponent, 
And we don't think either Biden or Trump have the stones to stop Kanye Wagon rolling into Washington. If we're really going to stop him getting the keys to the White House and keep Kim as the first lady of Twitter, not the whole of the USA, then something's going to have to be done. It's time to reignite a battle that had the world on the edge of their seats and up the stakes to the biggest prize in politics. Enter stage right someone with their own big reputation, the fearless Taylor Swift. There's been bad blood between Tay-Tay and Yi ever since the 2009 MTV Awards when Kanye showed a more heartless side as he gatecrashed Swifty's acceptance speech for best video. Visibly thrown, Taylor had to try and shake it off and she managed to hold it together and come out on top. She did it then, she can do it again. Now we need to ensure it's Taylor's name filling the blank space on the ballot form and that someone with more wit, humility and class than Kanye will ever have puts him firmly back in his place. She's ready for it now. Oh, I love it, mate. How strange that we have effectively <laughs> both had opposite ideas, more or less opposite. You want sanity, I want insanity. The ultimate clash of the titans. I love that. That's how weird, isn't that? That's so strange that we both, well, I mean, he's in the news. It doesn't take a, a genius to grab at that story and turn it into something. It is going to be quite the contest and and with you know quite serious consequences one way or another oh i mean it's it's gonna set the tone for the future of the earth as we know it do we want to go like i said earlier further down the rabbit hole into madness into wonderland and all of that sort of tripping trippy induced madness or do we want to listen to some country pop music <laughs> i mean i i stopped worrying about trying to put any jokes in my description and settled for just putting as many references to taylor swift songs and kanye songs as i possibly could there's about 15 in there i was delighted with that oh that's good i once did that with an end of year report with take that songs <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> nobody nobody noticed I had to point it out to staff but nobody noticed I was like it's clear it's clear that I've shoehorned in about five five take that songs uh, you know a blind man could see it but no it was not to be I love this this is a true head to head this will set the cat amongst the pigeons can you bring it back to 3-2 or well, can I burst into a 4-1 lead I think it says a lot about the world if you win this one I'm really, really worried that that you probably will. Uh, you know, based on previous weeks, it's not looking good for me. I've already had my first obstacle, by the way, because whilst uh, whilst I was waiting to record this, I, I thought, well, I'll get on Reddit and I'll get a head start. Goodness knows I need all the help I can get, right? So I tried to post it on a Reddit twa Taylor, Taylor Swift group on Reddit and I thought, this is the perfect place. There's like 97,000 people on this page. Um, but I messed it up already because I put, I mistyped the title and said, oh, I'll delete that. And then went to retype it. And it said, this, this link has already been shared. You cannot share it for another 30 days. Ah, uh, scuppered. Yeah, Your so diabolical plan has come to nothing. Where uh, did I that I that so I messaged the moderators of this group right, and said, oh, I'm really sorry, I've missed up and I'm not trying to spam the group, but I think your, your followers will be really interested in this. Why don't you put it on? And I just got back <laughs> immediately a really short, sharp message that just said, this is not allowed. <laughs> Getting told off on Reddit. Yeah, so the Taylor Swift group on Reddit whoever you may be, whoever these moderators may be, get a sense of humour um, and start to have some fun and stop being so rude in the messages that you send back. Otherwise, next week, our campaign will be shut down Reddit's Taylor Swift page. And with <laughs> the vast amount of petition signatures that we are bound to get, you will be shut down forever. Shut down Reddit. Let's just shut down Reddit. It's like you said, I'm fairly new to it all and still finding my way around, but it is a bizarre little world, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. There's groups for everything in Reddit.
love it. It's what what do they call it? The front page of the internet? Is that right? Yeah, I don't think it should be. I think it should be page three of the internet. Do you know what we forgot, Mark? <laughs> I know what's coming here. <laughs> We've forgotten to hear from our friend this week, haven't we? How could we possibly forget? How could we possibly forget? The poor guy must be up there somewhere above a beach in Ireland. Oh, he's got some proper glasses this week. <laughs> They're my wife's glasses. I'm not even sure if the accent that's going to come out is going to be the same. <laughs> I thought I'd get the sunglasses, the proper sunglasses for a bit of variety. Right, do you, do you want to introduce him? <laughs> okay. So, hang on, I'll try and get the wording right, as you told me to do it last week. Uh, let's get over to a windy beach in Ireland where Bono is up in the air. Hi, oh, oh, cheers, boys. It's dreadful windy up here. The wind, the hair, it's going to be blown off me. At the very least, my hairline will be marching around the back of my head. I'm having a dreadful time as well. The children down below on the beach keep shooting me with ball bed. You, you can help me, Mark. Are you a good shot? Yep. You look like you might know your way around an air rifle, all right. Do you want to get these little scumbags with me? Come on, Mark Rowe from Milton Keynes. That's where you're from. I honestly don't care if you don't posse up with me, Mark, because I will get them with or without you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Again... Same as last week, you left right in your actual campaign until about 10 minutes before we recorded this, but clearly you have spent a great deal of time this week working on that impression and trying to come up with something to drop another very, very weak Bono pun, U2 pun, into your, into your chat. It's my new jam, Paragliding Bono, I live for him. <laughs> I like it. What happened to... I thought we were going to get more and more accessories every week. Well, I've changed the sunglasses, so, you know, we're a step in the right direction. I did say that I could uh, have a look, because I work in a drama department in a school, believe it or not. I did say that I'd be able to have a little route around and find you some bits of costume, but I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Hey! Now you get it. Basically, this... This podcast is just going to devolve into you two puns. What's the point in a competition? Let's just do that. So if you have any you two puns that you want to send our way for us to try and seamlessly wedge in to our chat next week, um, or if you want to support the campaigns, then check us out on social media, at Inane Pod on Twitter, on Instagram, uh, the Inane Podcast on Facebook. Just go and find them and please support the campaigns because, quite frankly, I can't afford for you not to. Sam, I don't want to end up like Woody Guthrie singing Dust Bowl Refugee. Uh, it's going to be interesting this week, Andy. I honestly am, am waiting with bated breath to see who comes out on top in this one. I am slightly concerned that it isn't going to be me again. And as I said earlier, I think that says an awful lot about the state of the world if you win once again. How far down the rabbit hole do you want to go? I'll see you next week. Cheers, buddy. Joe Exotica, can you? What's for presidents? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>